Okay, so let's start. Okay, so uh, we're back from the <laughs> from the time you know the the daylight saving uh, break <laughs> uh, of the time zones. So uh, we're continuing uh, discussing uh, chapter sixteen, which has an interesting title: "Escaping the Graph." Okay, all right. So uh, the objective, the main objective of this word uh, chapter is to give you more flexibility on how to manage uh, what is called a reactive uh, graph, you know, because sometimes even though that's the main, uh, you know, engine that Shiny works, uh, you have to be able to do certain, uh, certain operations uh, within those, you know, reactive uh, uh, constraints, okay? So he says that at the end of, the, of this chapter, you will be able, able to understand what are the escaping of a reactive graph constraint, you know, uh, means, and what are the techniques to combine and connect the reactive graph applying manner controls over parts of the graph. For example, you know, like stopping operation or accumulating, you know, a, a, a variable, et cetera. So here we're going to do, you know, combining reactive values we're going to learn how to connect the right side, which is the, the output from the left side, which is the input, the UI, and then uh, uh, and create infinite loop, but they're not going to be running infinite. It's just, you know, the framework of in, uh, creating uh, this kind of loops. Okay, so uh, as a matter of introduction, and I'll go back and forth, you know, with the book. I think the book does a better job. Uh, sometimes that, that, that the, than the notes. It gives you a little more information. But one of the things that uh, the author starts uh, discussing is the use of the functions reactive vol and observe or observe event functions within the scope of manually controlling parts of the of the reactive graph. Okay. So uh, let's start with a, uh, with a, you know, with a sample, right? which is the best way to start uh, uh, internalizing this, uh, this stuff. So let's say that we have this, this code, right? We have the, the UI, which is a text input, and we're going to input a name. Then we have the action button, uh, which is going to be, you know, at the, you know uh, one, one, one after the other. The action button, which is uh, uh, what is called a clear, a clear button. So what it's going to do is clear Whatever you have typed in that box in the text input is going to clear it. And it's going to add an output, a text output that says hi. So here you will see that if I type a name, let's say angel, it's going to say hi, angel, right? Or hi, Ricardo, or hi, you know, whichever. And the way that it's going to, you know, work here is that, that uh, the hi is going to be, uh, you know, like a fixed text right high here with a with a space and then it's going to paste zero without any space it's going to paste the input that the user is going to type which is the name in this case uh, then the output is going to be render text high right this this object here high and then it's going to observe that uh clear the action button the clear the clear button and if we press it then the box where the name is uh, is uh, imputed is going to clear with this value. All right. So let's let's do it in in action. Let's take the library. Let's take the UI, the server, and shiny app. You server, UI server. Okay. So let's run this. All right. So we have the box. Uh, the the label is name, right? We have our clear button, and then we have the high, which is the fixed text. And uh, let's put angel here, right? So automatically, when it detects the you know the input, it uh, you know uh, outputs that same string a string of characters after high, you know, with the paste. Okay. If I want to clear, I say clear here, and then I can put it on it. Okay and so forth. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't do this test. Let's see if, let's see what happens here. Okay, good. 
uh, even if I input a number, it's going to be treated as a string, okay? And that's what I expected too, but I, I didn't test it when I was, you know. Try uh, to use noon in this. instead. Huh? Use noon. Great. <laughs> okay, yep. Uh, anything that you, because it's a, it's a text input, so anything that you type here, uh, is going to be treated as a string of characters, okay? And then, you know, you're going to see it there. Uh, let me see if I can put, uh, you know, some, some yeah, garbage. Okay? Everything can be... Yeah, everything can be a string. Exactly. Uh, an, ASCII, an ASCII character, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. All right. So, now we have that, you know, that's a, a simple example of how that uh, reactive, right? The, the reactive words using uh, this function, reactive, okay? So now, uh, here it describes, you know, what happens when you press that, that clear button. Uh, so the clear button, what it says, uh, this, it, it invalidates the observer. So in other words, as, uh, the, the shiny, the server, is observing what I'm doing in that text box, right? So anything that I do in that text box is going to be uh, texted, texted after high, but the clear interrupts that and you know starts again, okay? And that's the function you know that that, that we're doing with the you know with that uh, with that clear. So uh, it says here, okay. So in the case studies, we want to see different examples on how to combine the reactive values with the observe. That, that is observe event or observe to solve certain problems that the author says that could be very challenging, if not impossible. So let's uh, study this one. This is this, this one output by multiple inputs. So let's get started with a very simple problem. It says, I want a common text box that's updated by multiple events. So in this one, we have two action buttons. One of them uh, says drink, right? Uh, you know, it, it's, it's uh, the, the object is drink and the label is drink me. So it's going to appear as drink me within that button. And then the other one is eat, right? With the label eat and eat me. And there's going to be an output that says notice, all right? So in this one, we're going to use the reactive values, right? When notice is nothing, is going to observe the event and within that object, we're going to put the notice and it's going to say you're no longer thirsty. So what it is going to do is that when I press drink, it's going to tell me that I'm no longer thirsty. And when I press eat, it's going to tell, you know, the output is going to output you're no longer hungry, all right? So let's, uh, I run this, okay. Let's run this to see if what we're saying is correct. So if we press drink me, okay, that's the that's the observe event, right? Because they're observing two events, but that's the one that I'm going to be uh, changing the 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 status. So when I say drink me, it says you're no longer thirsty, all right? And when I say eat me. You're no longer hungry. Okay, one or the two. All right, all right. And what it's, it's saying is observe in the reactive value, and the notice is you know the the default is 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 nothing, right? You know the the status is nothing. When we observe that we do something with the input drink, is going to then uh, give us the the string. You're no longer thirsty. When we observe the input, if that changes, then we're going to tell you, or we want to text, you're no longer hungry. And that's going to be the output of notice by the rendered text. You know this this two text there. Now, things are going to get a bit complicated in the next example. It says because we're going to have an app here that has two buttons that lets you increase and decrease a value. Uh, we're going to use the reactive values to store the current value and then use the observe event to increment or decrement the value. 
So here we have the same two buttons, but instead of drink me and eat me, it's going to be up, right? And that's the label that we're going to do. And another one that is going to uh, do the down, the decreasing uh, you know, function. And the text output is going to be N, which is the variable that we are going to be working on. So for the reactive values, N starting at zero, we observe the event. If, if we press up, it's going to add one. If we press down, it's going to subtract, subtract one. All right, and that's the output that is going to render. So let's come here. Okay, so now we have our buttons, right? Action buttons up and down, and then we have our end. We start at zero, correct? So if we go up, okay, adding one is going to add one every time I press up. All right. If I then press down, it's going to subtract one every time I press down. Okay. If I keep doing, it's going to keep you know going negative. All right. Okay. Yeah, amazing. So so far so good, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, everything. That's so uh, yeah. <laughs> so far yeah. that's observe it and event and maybe yeah. the, the, the 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 go to use buttons. That's, Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. And and for example, uh one use that I have done it before is for example with reset. Okay. That for example, if I have a dashboard, right? And I want to reset it to the original default values, you know, that the dashboard it, it was there. So I do this kind of, you know, this, this kind of interaction, you know, the observe the event of that action button. And then I say, okay, go back to those, you know, default values. Default values for all the, uh -huh. for, the for, for, that, for that dashboard. So it's easy, for example, it's easy to, you know, do whatever you want, you know, in the dashboard, but then you can go to the original state. Okay. Oh, no. yeah, and, that's that's, right. and, and, and that's one application, uh, you know, a very, a very practical application for 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 this. All right. So what happens when we want to do some accumulating inputs, right? Uh, it's a similar uh, you know pattern in the accumulation uh, data in order to support uh, data entry. So here he says uh, Hadley says that the main difference is that we use update text input to reset the text box after the user clicks the add button, okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to, uh, you know, input a, a name, text input. We're going to add an action button that says add, and then the text is going to be, uh, I'm going to, you know, add a, a name, then I'm going to add a second name, a third name, and so forth, okay? And that's what the reactive values is going to help me do. In reactive values, you have names as, as, as a character, right? You know, the uh, instantiate that, that object. Then in the observe event, when I input the add, it's going to, it's going to then, uh, you know, accumulate those names that I'm, that I'm inputting with the opted, update text input. In other words, it's not going to go like the first example, that is going to just, you know, override that uh, that input is going to add it. In other words, it's like a concatenation. What 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 is it going to do? So let me show you how does it work. Okay. So here we go. Right. We have a name, Angel. Right. Uh, Ricardo. Okay. Uh, Mary. Let's, put, let's put John. Okay. Uh, Eric. And so forth. All right. And as you can see, if I keep adding, you know, stuff, <laughs> uh, it, it just keeps, you know, you know, accumulating uh, that. That's so the only function. Things, uh, go ahead. Uh -huh. No, but that's the only function that, you, yeah, you can do it. 
Exactly. So, so one of the things that precisely what we were do, we were, uh, you know, I, I was, I was, I was uh, explaining, is that it would be nice to have a, a reset button here, right? <laughs> so it, I can reset and go back to original you know, state, which is that you know we didn't have any any names, all right? So, uh, but that's okay, not right. part of the part of, part of the exercise, not not yet. <laughs> and you know, Ricardo, to me it's really interesting. You're mm -hmm. concatenating using the C function. But the the render test is like a collapse in them. So it's like you are mm -hmm. passing many elements or two elements object and he's passing to and his printing at uh, it just would be one. Right. So it's collapsing. When you have the paste function, you have a argument that is collapsed. And they okay. are collapsing with a space. Okay. And he's doing that by default, I mean. Right. But right. You, if you are adding, and you are adding a space between names, maybe you would like to to add the names with a comma, for example. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Yes. That, in that way, you would need to to use the paste function, find that the C, mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. I, to, 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 to return it a single a string every time rather than a, a cumulative vector. Yeah, and, and also you can play with this, you know, for example, right now, the the input is going to be always in the first position, right? Yeah. Okay. But sometimes you say, no, 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 I want just to, you know, keep the, you know, the, the regular order. So you have to, you know, work a little bit so as to get the proper order, etc. Mm -hmm. So that there's some things that, you know, it, 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 you, could, you could improve here. Okay, so we're going to get that that reset button right in the next in the next iteration, uh, because it says that it will be slightly more useful by providing a delete button. Uh, in my case, I will I will have said a, a, a reset button, um, making sure that the app button doesn't create duplicate uh, names. Okay, which is you know interesting, right? So we're going to add is another action button, you know, to our uh, current script that it says uh, delete, right? And what we're going to do is when we observe that function, right? The delete function is going to then update the text input uh, with this value, okay? You know, with the, with the, with the, with the, with the value uh, of the difference between uh, the names and the, and the input. So let's see how it works. I think that set difference also is to avoid the duplicate also. Okay, so let's do the same thing. Okay, we're going to add. Okay, now we are, we are adding, you know, in the in the same order, right? Okay, because before it was adding at the first position. Now we're we're, we're getting an, an enhancement here. Yeah. Okay, so let's go, John. Right. Uh, let me put. Uh, let me put my name again. Okay. You can see that it, it does not say my name because my name was, is already there. Yeah. Okay, that that's the that that's this one. The set difference, right? The set difference. So. No, that would union would be. Oh, the union. You, yes. You are Correct. adding and you are adding and, and and using the union. Yes. Exactly. You're, you're right. You're right. And then, okay, so let's press delete, right? Okay. You need to delete one by one. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, and you delete one more. So it's not really a reset. It's just a delete. It, it, yeah, it's, it's delete one. Right. Name. Because, because it's using the set difference. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, and I put your name it's with the L. L. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. Okay, so we still you know, could add that button, right? With the reset, yeah, to, reset you know, well. clean, clean the slate there. Okay. All you right. The, you, I, you have, I think that you can use the chat. You know, I see here the chat function. Mm -hmm. the, just in Shiny, I, I most used to use the vector function to create empty, empty vectors. I don't okay. know if, it's like better with zero length. I don't know if that's I think that's also the output I use receive from chart.
Are, are, are you are you posting in the chat? No, no, no. I no. Okay. I'm just explaining. Okay. That the to reset mm -hmm. to reset to, to apply the reset uh, option would be maybe to create an anti vector. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. an anti -vector. Yes. You you're going to you're going to create another action button that says uh, reset, right? Reset. Right. And then in that reset, you have to you know clear clear the that that vector in this case. Right. In, in the other case, in the dashboard, what you do is that you return, you know, the original value return it to the to the default. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So in this one, uh, which is pausing animations, right? Well, uh, it explains here that another common use case, you know, to 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 get this, you know, game between the reactive values and observed value of the events. Is to is to provide like a start a, st a stop button that lets you control some recurring event, right? So in this example, uh, we are running a reactive value to control whether or not the number increments, and it's going to be using this invalidate later to ensure that the observer is invalidated every two hundred fifty milliseconds when running. Okay, very precise, right? <laughs> yeah, so it will run again. Correct. Correct. Uh, that's to me it was hard to understand first time, but that's the point. Yeah. So <laughs> so we have two action buttons, right? Start and stop. We had the, the our text. Uh, we had the reactive values. The running, uh, at, you know, at, at at the first uh instance is false and and is zero. So we're going to observe the event or input start, and we're going to say that run, running is going to be true. It's going to change the status here. And it's going to start running this uh, this loop, okay? Of adding, you know, one every you know every two hundred fifty milliseconds. Then, if we say stop, it's going to change the running to false, and then it's going to affect the the observe, okay? The observe, so you know, it's going, it's going to stop it. So let's see how how does it does it work. Okay, so we have n equals zero, right? That's our uh, numeric vector, numeric value. We say start, and it start adding one, right? Okay, and then when we do stop, it stops. It is stop. Yeah, no, okay. really. And then if we do start again, invalidate it later. It's making it's the image. In the, uh, uh, starting from the same place that it stop. And then when it stops, it stops. <laughs> okay. Um, invalidate later to me is, I know we have seen that before, but it's a really yeah. interesting function. Yeah, and, and you can change the parameters of, you know, uh, you know, the timing, the timing of the invalidate uh, later also. Okay, here they're, they're using, you know, 250 milliseconds here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. And it, and it explains it. It says, it says here that in this case, we can easily use observe event because we perform different actions depending on whether running is true or false. Since we can observe event, we must isolate, use isolate. If we don't, if we don't this, if we don't, this observer will also take care of reaction, reactive dependency on end, which updates and so, and so we get stuck in an infinite loop. And not okay. taking the time. Exactly. You know, it won't wait to a time, so mm -hmm. I don't know. It will, it will it will increase really fast and never stop. Right, right. Okay, so uh, let's do some of the exercises. Okay, I you know check in this uh just to make sure that I had the correct you know <laughs> the the correct approach. I checked some of the solutions in another site, but it says provide a server function that draws a histogram of 100 random numbers for a normal distribution when normal is click and 100 random uniforms. So we got two action buttons, right? One for the generation of the random uh, uh, numbers for a normal distribution and from a uniform distribution and the plot out. What we need to create is the server uh, side, right? So here is as an example of that server side. Uh, we get the reactive values, right? Random data is a is a vector, 
bone numeric length 100. And then in the observed event, if I press norm, it's going to give me 100, right? Uh, random numbers. If I press run, run if, it's going to give me 100 uniform distribution numbers. And then the output plot, which is going to be used by render plot, is going to require those uh, uh, numbers, right? Either normal or uh, uniform, depending on what I press, and then do a histogram uh, for the random data. So at least the last time I did it, it worked. So let's see if it does it. Uh, it should work, yeah. Yeah, it should. It should, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, so let's try the normal, right? Boom. Uh, let's try the uniform. Boom. And you can also click it twice. Yeah. Uniform now, so you will say a different sample. That's right. Yeah. You can click it twice or thrice or whatever. Yeah, yeah. The point, so you will say, oh, normal and normal. Yeah. <laughs> we are, it's working. <laughs> exactly. So one yeah, of the no, things that I, that, that I wanted to do, you know, I didn't have the time, but I wanted to do is to let the user choose a, uh, you know, a seed, a seed for the random. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that that, that yes. will be an enhancement here because then you have some reproducibility, right? Yeah. You should need to add that to the, yeah, to the form. To the it form, yeah. Cell, uh, select numeric, I think, is the function. Right, right. Or, or numeric input. Uh -huh, select numeric input. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ah, and also but, because you could also in the for the that example, you mm -hmm. you don't need to use the vector left one hundred. You could uh, erase that part. Yeah, this example, one. No, the argument. Yeah, the argument. They said length equals one hundred because right. it's creating a vector of one hundred position with nothing, but you don't need to have the same length. Okay. Okay. Because it's like you are saving an object and it doesn't matter the length of the object that you are saving, you are say you are substituting with a new one. With a new one, yes. Yeah, you are no you see you don't have any brackets. Mm -hmm. uh, so you are no input to a specific positions. Okay, so if I do this, it's going to create a vector, but the vector doesn't have anything, right? Exactly. That would be an and, empty and then vector. I, I, zero I, I, length. I I populate it with the with the with the R norm or the R unit. No, yeah, that's in, that's necessary because otherwise you won't get the the sample size that you want. Okay, okay. Yeah, but that that should also run. Um, I also tested, and you can do it now. And uh, it's the same because I just want you to to emphasize that you are no a uh, substituting value by value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Well, what can they say? Mm -hmm. Good catch, good catch. Okay. Okay, so let's go to the other exercise. And it says, modify your code from above of this work with this UI. So now we're going to select, instead of doing the buttons, we're going to select the input. So that means that there's going to be like a drawn, drawn down menu, right? Uh, name type. And it's going, to, it is, it's going to take two values or normal or uniform. And then an action bu button that says go. Right, and uh, I'm plotting the app. So here is, uh, you know, the same, uh, more or less the same uh, uh, server uh, instruction. The only thing that instead of input, right, input here norm is input go here. Okay, because we changed the action button. And if input type is normal, then we're going to, you know, run the, 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 the random numbers of a normal distribution. If it's a uh, uh, uniform, then run it. Okay. Uh, so let me run this. Okay. So let's say go right. And we want uniform. Boom. Okay. And the same thing. You can repeat it as many times as you want. <laughs> Yeah, now it's more more simple. Correct. Yeah, instead of doing two buttons, now you know it's more stylish. No. <laughs> okay, so now 
It says rewrite your code from the previous answer to eliminate the use of observe and observe event and only use reactive. What can you why why can you do that for the second UI but not for the first? Okay, so let's see. Uh, in the third one, okay, I got the UI from the second uh, from the second example, right? The type, you know, the the, the draw, draw draw down example, and then here instead of observe event, what they did here was. Uh, let me see, let me see where I am. Okay, so it's really about the reactive, okay? Instead of reactive values, I'm going to use the value reactive and then, uh, you know, uh, uh, discard or delete this observe event. Okay, so it's going to be only reactive. And then uh, with the if, we're going to generate the random numbers for either normal or uh, uniform. Okay, which is a little more concise here. So let's see if we get the same the same uh, application that we have in the second one. Okay. Okay, good. And good. Okay, so one of the things that uh, the author says, why can you do that for the second UI, but not for the first? Okay, so in the first one, we had the action buttons, right? We have two action buttons. Right, right. Let me see. Exactly. Yeah, because because you have two action buttons instead of one, I believe. Uh, you know, you cannot do the same thing that we did with React. You can do it here because you have to observe both events. Okay. Uh, because here you only are observing this button, the the go button, okay, and then the reactive can say, okay, if you if you have type normal and you press the button, then I'm going this way. If you have uniform and you press the go button, I go this way, okay. I think that that's what you know is happening instead of here that you have two independent uh, buttons. So you need to observe both events, something that maybe the reactive cannot do. What do you think? Yeah, the point is, imagine, if you have two buttons, mm -hmm. how do you win, right. uh, stop the, the histogram? So, for example, you have using the, the wrap function, the required, uh -huh. item, you would need to, to, to put it twice. Correct, correct. You know, you have one or, or the other. Um, mm -hmm. it's not it's no so clear the the workflow you know it's like exactly. in, when you are using the the R, the the select the random list you create mm -hmm. you select then you go and then you generate any output correct correct yeah because right now if we have two buttons we have to be observing both of the events. both buttons independently okay. Right. You know, we cannot wrap it in the reactive because the reactive, he, he won't know, you know, which button is the one that I'm going to be, you know, working on. Yeah. Okay. okay, so let's see. Okay, here is an interesting one. Remember that in the exercises, you got the UI, you have to do the server part, right? Uh, here, uh, I mean, it's not an exercise per se, but here, I wanted to test myself, you know, to try to complete this function. And what happens is that the author here, uh, you know, present us with two different scripts, but they do the same thing. Okay. So here we're going to use the reactive values, right? Uh, we're going to observe uh, the, the, you know, this, this R, this object here, and we're going to, you know, uh, create uh, a table, a table of input rows, right? Input rows and, you know, just uh, getting the head of those input rows. We're going to create this. And that's what we're going to plot and we're going to do in the table. So we need a UI, right? You need a UI that is going to then complete this function. So the UI must have a numeric input and the numeric input will be, uh, you know, the, the rows, right? 
you know, the n rows. And the output is going to be the output for the for the plot and the output for the tape. So here, what I did was this. Okay. This is my version of the of the UI fluid page, numeric input. I'm going to label it n rows, right? Number of rows. I'm going to label it number of rows per se. The minimum is going to be one, one row, and the maximum is going to be 50. And this can, you know, improve in the sense that I should I should uh, check the database that I'm going to be using to check the maximum numbers of rows. But in this case, I wanted to do it in a simple way. And I know that they, that data set from cars has a maximum of 50 observations, 50 rows. So that's the maximum. Then I'm going to uh, set a default value of 10. So if the user doesn't do anything, it's going to provide the first 10 observations. Then I'm going to plot the output and I'm going to name it plot because that's how it's named here, plot, right? And the table output, which is going to be table, all right? So if we run this, okay, this is what we get. We get the number of rows, right? We get the plot, which is, uh, there's only two columns here, speed and distance. So it's a scatter plot. And then we get the observations for the plot. If we go uh, 11, it's going to keep adding, you know, the, the rows that are after that. If we go back, then, you know, it decreases the number of rows as the number of, uh, you know, of uh, inputs. All right. But. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Right, so it it, it worked. It, it took me a little bit of uh, you know trouble uh, figuring this one because yeah. I went I went with select input <laughs> and select input is a character. <laughs> yeah, it's a character it doesn't spell a number. So I check in the documentation. Ah, numeric input. Okay, good. That's good. Oh no, no, that's that's okay. right. And, and, and that's that's what, that's how what we how we learn, right? Of course. But, no, no. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the author says, in this simple case, this code doesn't do much extra work compared to the alternative that uses React, because here we're using reactive values and we're using observe, observe. correct? But if we use only reactive, we should get the same, uh, you know, the, 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 the same output. Okay, so let's do this. And as you can see, I haven't changed the UI. Exactly. No, the no, UI no. stay the same. So I did this, right? And you get the same, the same results. Oh, no. Okay. No, that's that's right. So a, a, a word of advice, uh, you know, depending on what what you are doing, sometimes the reactive values are observed. You can use reactive only to achieve the same, you know, the same result, the same the same goal. Okay, as long as reactive is only observing one, you know, oh, one 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 event. Okay, if 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 you have more than one, then probably you will have to use the reactive values and the observe. All mm. right, and of course this one is much cleaner uh, code. No, I also create a better reactive graph. Right, right, yeah, it's it's it's, it's more compact and it's you know it, it flows. Better. And it's safer. They explain also. Yeah, yeah, it's safer because if you you have a problem in your old self function, it will block the whole shiny app. Right. But if you have an error in the reactive expression, only the dependent part will be, but the 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 app will keep running. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, so that's basically it. Okay. Uh, so now you know we know how to manipulate it a bit more that reactive graph with this you know reactive val, reactive observe event, observe and so forth. Oh, great. So that's it for great presentation. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so this is 